Well, welcome once again to Word for the Week, our online book study and devotional series here at Cornerstone Faith Community Church. My name is Pastor Jeremy Heikum, and I'm glad to be with you today as we uh, begin a new book study this week, looking at uh, Max Lucado's book, Traveling Light. I'm really excited to look through this book, uh, to, to read through this book with you. Um, it, uh, it is going to, I believe, be a, a great, great book for us reading through. The chapters are a little bit shorter than what we had been reading, um, but um, it's really going to be, I hope, a time of, 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 um, of new peace, maybe, for, uh, for, uh, for, for those who are reading through this book together. Um, before we kind of talk about what Max Licato has written this week, um, I, I need to ask you to consider two things. Um, the first thing is this. In order for this book to really be applied well to our lives and in order to take what Max Licato has written here and really grow from it, we have to be willing to consider our own lives. We, we can't just read this book and say, oh, well, I know somebody who this might help. This book needs to speak to our lives. We need to be reading this book, yeah, sure, for the benefit of other people, but also, and most importantly, for our benefit. Which means the second thing I need you to consider is that you are very likely, just as I am, carrying baggage around with you every day. And you might not feel like it's real heavy, but when we really start to think through what that baggage is and what it does to us in our lives, I, I believe you will come to recognize that this is some pretty heavy stuff. And it weighs us down a lot more than we would ever realize. And so I, I would ask you to begin even now considering being willing to lay this heavy, heavy burden, um, the, the weight of this baggage, down before God. Of course, in order to do that, we need to uh, kind of understand first and foremost what the baggage is, how it impacts our lives. And so that's uh, Lucado's um, first purpose as he talks about the luggage of life. I like the um, illustration he uses of traveling, you know, in on, on an airplane. Um, and of course, Especially nowadays, um, as we travel, uh, we're so limited uh, by the, uh, the amount of weight we can bring on an airplane, the number of baggages we can bring on an airplane. Uh, you know, we, we see um, in movies or we hear of, of days gone by when folks would travel on trains or on um, ships uh, across the ocean, and they would bring big steamer trunks full of, of clothing and, and even, you know, personal things like dishes and other kinds of stuff. And, um, and the weight of those things was just tremendous. We can't do that today. In our modern aircrafts, um, we have to pack lightly. We have to travel lightly. And so Max Licato talks about how he has never been good at traveling lightly. He always wants to bring too much stuff with him. And that's the key component right there, too much stuff. Um, our baggage that Lucado is going to ask us to think about is, is really best defined as stuff. Things, feelings, emotions, people, situations, disappointments, failures in our life that really weigh us down. And so at the front end of what Lucado has to write on page five, he, um, he brings to mind the 23rd Psalm, which is, I think, perfect for this idea of, of laying down baggage. Because if we think about the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Um, the, the beauty of not wanting is because the shepherd has it under his control. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. It's incredible to think about restoration, 
You know, this this passage, a lot of people look at it, but that doesn't sound like baggage to me. That's not talking about baggage. No, it isn't talking about baggage. It's talking about what happens instead of baggage, what happens when we lay down the baggage. We get the restoration. We get this new feeling of life. We, we come beside the still waters and we drink and our thirst is quenched. That burden goes away and we have room for something else. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Now that recognizes we bring something with this. We're going through these really hard times. We go through frustrations and, and temptations and all kinds of things. And every one of those situations we go through adds more baggage to our life. And, you know, we're so good. We're so good about carrying that baggage that we just, okay, pile it on, pile it on, pile it on. We'll just keep carrying it. And eventually that baggage is just going to drag us down. We've got to be willing to get rid of it. And so at the end of Psalm 23, then, you know, we hear, you prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy will be with me all the day of my life. So in order for goodness and mercy to be there, guess what we have to get rid of? Yeah, all that other stuff. You know, there's only so much room on our shoulders and our hearts and our minds and our lives and if we're filling it up with all this other stuff, where's the room for the goodness and the mercy? And so we got to set it down. Lucado talks about some different kinds of burdens. Bottom of page four, he says, The suitcase of guilt, a sack of discontent. You drape a duffel bag of weariness on one shoulder and a hanging bag of grief on the other. Add a backpack of doubt and an overnight bag of loneliness and a trunk of fear. Pretty soon, you're pulling more stuff from the sky cap. No wonder you're so tired at the end of the day. Lugging luggage is exhausting. And then he talks about how God says to us, well, then set it down. Let me carry it for you. But, you know, that's not how we like to do things. Setting down our luggage, asking God to take it for us, it is usually not in our um, personalities to do that as humans. I think there are some key problems for us in deciding to set down the, the baggage, the, the luggage of our lives. The, the first one is this. In order to set down this, this luggage, this baggage, this stuff, we would have to be consciously willing to give up control of those things. Right. In order to, you know, when, think about yourself walking through the airport. OK, you, you're carrying your luggage. When you set that stuff down, you've let go of control of it for a moment. And, and if you're in some of the less safe airports in the world, boy, just setting it down, somebody could come and snatch it right away from you. Um, it could be gone forever. And, and for some weird reason, even though we're carrying bad stuff, weighty stuff. We're afraid to set it down. Somebody might come and take it away from us. Then what, where will we be without it? We've always had that as part of our lives. Where would we be without it? Well, we would be in a much better place, but we just don't want to let it down. We don't want to let control of it. The second problem we have with setting down our luggage is our being willing to trust God with it. You know, um, my grandfather, when he went to uh, visit his sister, in Florida. He was um, just about 80 years old uh, when he started going to see her uh, on a regular basis. My, my grandmother had passed away. There was no reason for him not to go. And, uh, and, and so he would, he would go and spend a month or so with her in Florida in the winter. And um, I remember the first time he went, uh, we were all with him at the airport here in Chicago. And, and we, we made sure that he got there safely and carried his stuff for him if he'd let us. But when he got to Florida, we wanted to make sure that neither he nor uh, his sister was carrying this heavy luggage through the airport. And so we had, um, you know, uh, an airport um, staff member. We set it up so that the airline would have someone meet him at the gate, take his luggage for him and make sure he made it all the way out to the curb where um, his sister was going to pick him up. He was furious, furious with us. And the first reason he was upset was he said, I don't know who this person is that's going to be taking my luggage. How do I know if, if I can trust them? How do I know if they'll, if they'll take care of it? How do I know if it's going to make it to where it's supposed to be? How, how do I know? I don't, I don't know if I 
if I really trust this person with my luggage? And we have that same problem with God, believe it or not. You might, you might say, that's silly. Why wouldn't people trust God? Well, because there's certain things that we just aren't, it's not programmed in us. It's just not easy for us to trust God with those things. Yeah, we want to. We desire that, but, but our hearts just have a hard time giving up control of them and, and actually trusting him with them. The third problem we have also applies to this same illustration. When my grandfather arrived in, in Florida, not only was he wondering whether he could trust this person, but he was saying, you've got to be kidding me. You know, I'm, I'm still an able-bodied man. I can carry my own luggage. I don't need someone else to do this for me. And we do that so often with God. We say, well, I, I've been carrying it a long time. I, I, know how to, I know how to carry it. It's fine. I'll just keep carrying it. I can do this. I can do this. But we can't. We don't need to. God would so much rather carry it for us. But we've just got to be willing to give up control, trust him, and let him. I've included in your email this week uh, a, a, a document that's got a picture of an open suitcase on it. And it's a few little steps for you there. I want you to keep this document nearby as we work, work through this whole book. But, but over the next week, I'd like you to think about what is the baggage? What are the things you're carrying? And I'd like you to write them down inside that suitcase. Then maybe take that, fold it, put it in your book, keep it with you, and, and look back at it each week. Maybe jot down more notes as you, as you kind of understand a little better about this baggage. Go to God in conversation about this baggage and begin by just asking him to, to open your heart's willingness to, to consider letting go of this stuff. And I hope eventually we'll get to the place where you will let it go. You will give that over to him and really truly trust him with it. But for now, I want you to start by thinking about what that baggage is and writing it down. I'm really looking forward to uh, working through this book with you. I think it's going to be great for all of us. Um, I look forward to meeting with you again next week. We'll read chapter two together. And until then, I hope you really have a great week. We'll see you soon.